Hey everyone, this is Will from BeerNT.com, and you know here's today's free video. And it appears that uh, the videos I put out the last couple days worked out pretty well, so I think I'm going to stick with uh, that vein for a while. So today we're going to go and look up um, a benchmarking program for our hard drives and HD Tune, and you know there's the new version, which you know is the is the one you pay for. And then there's the free version, which is this guy. Old, kind of out of date, mostly works on just about everything out there, though. So. Because really, when we're benchmarking most of our programs, what we're really after is the read test, the benchmark, smart status, and the error scan. Now, what this will do is allow you to test the actual speeds of your drives. So when you're looking at, uh, you know, maybe purchasing a new hard drive, maybe getting a bigger one, maybe you're just wondering, you know, why is my computer so slow? A slow hard drive will indeed uh, bring your computer to a crawl. And I know this for a couple a couple of reasons. Um, I've upgraded mine from my previous hard drive and I stuck that previous hard drive in another machine and that other hard drive is a Western Digital 320 gig drive circa 2003 that still runs and it's probably about a third the speed uh, transfer rate wise of the newer Western Digital Blacks which is actually what I'm going to benchmark here and you can feel it you wait a long time for that thing to boot up and you wait a long time for things to load and there's also even a 160 gig old IDE drive hiding in that machine as like a storage drive and it's even slower than that and you, know, you, you try to run things off of those drives and you can feel it and this will also uh, let us walk into a little bit about um, what makes the new solid state drive so nice so anyhow we're going to start our benchmark and it'll start uh, reading from the outer edge of the of the drive and slide into the inner edge, edge of the drive. Why this is important is because uh, you have a higher rotational speed on the outside of the drive. There's more drive spinning by it at the same amount of speed, so you end up with some nicer uh, some nicer readings. Um, if you've ever heard of short stroking, short stroking is where you pretty much make the drive not use the inner two thirds or so of the drive. Uh, Western Digital Raptors have been short stroked. Um, short stroking is also common sometimes uh, in like a business application where you need a lot of performance. You'll have a raid of a bunch of short stroke drives. And what short stroking does is it keeps the um, hard drive, you know, over here on this high performance part, and it also makes it so that, you know the arm of the hard drive, you know, so it's moving back and forth through here. The arm of the hard drive only has to move so far instead of over the whole thing, so it's got a lot faster access speed. Now the access time, what that is, is it's the time from when the hard drive receives a command to when the armature finds the data. Now. The reason why fragmentation and heavy defragmenting used to be a big deal is because heavily fragmented data, there's a piece here, and a piece here, and a piece here, and a piece here, and you'll get, the armature will go to the data, take that access time, go to the next data, access time to the next data, access time to the next data. So the more defragmented your data was, the more the armature had to move around, and every time it had to move, you add your access time to the, del the delay between when the data starts coming in. Now, if you look at uh, a solid state drive, the access time is virtually nothing. So literally they're just pulling it out of memory. Um, burst rate, CPU usage, reading and writing are all much higher. The only bad part about solid state drives at the moment is higher price, uh, lower capacity, and um, also some problems with uh, garbage collection and keeping those memory cells uh, clean. Um, some of the newer ones that are just coming out, though, have platform agnostic uh, garbage collection, which means they don't need a driver like Trim does. They don't need anything like that. So they're, they're platform independent, and they just do their garbage collection as they see fit. Those would be drives like Sandforce, controller-based drives, and uh, the new uh, Kingston V100 Plus is also like that. And they're finally coming down in price. They're about, oh, what was it, like 180 for the 120 gig drive, so you know, so size has gone up a little bit. Price is coming down. Um, 
120 gig drives almost big enough for most of your your uh, boot drives and your most of your programs so yeah you could run something like that and do pretty easily um, as you can see here the minimum has uh, been steadily dropping as we get toward the inside of the inside of the drive this isn't really this really isn't too bad I mean it, it, it's sustained its read for, for quite a while and you know your maximum is you know when you're gonna the, the amount of data flowing from one to the other so I mean you can kind of take one in the middle here not always the, not always the case though CPU usage is how much you know how much CPU the the machine is taking burst rate is uh, how fast because the, the, the hard drives have a cache burst rate is how fast the data from um, you know, if if all the data is in a line, how fast can it just pull it out? So, um, then there's the access time, 18.5 milliseconds. Kind of not such a great access time for a. I think that's supposed to be a black. I mean, you can look up those. Uh, you can look up those numbers, and they should tell you what they are. So in this case, we're going to look for a WDC. W, you know, let's just do WD. WD 1001 FALS. And it's a caviar black. Standard 7200 RPM. Um, I have the same, or similar to the same drives at home, and I get a little bit better minimum than that. But anyhow, so after you've run this thing, you can take a look at uh, you know your hard drives. Or if you're looking at buying a new hard drive, you can now make a little more sense out of the benchmarks that they're giving you, like on the benchmarking websites when they say, you know, this has this such and such access time. Access time is going to make the system feel more responsive. If you're doing a lot of large transfers, you're going to want more... Uh, a higher average and a higher maximum file transfer speed. Um, so yeah, I'm Will for Beer NIT, and this has been a hard our uh, HD tune. And if you have any other uh, questions or you want me to make any videos, you can submit the questions here on YouTube, or you can come to our website at beerNIT.com and the forum link there. You can register and request there. You can also help people there, and people can help you with your problems if you like to post them. Um, also, BRT.com slash store has a full complement of our PC repair training videos and our toolkits for sale. Thanks, and see you on the forums.